Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's In the Artist Studio. My name is Nicole Winthrop, and I'm the membership manager here at Museum of the African Diaspora in San Francisco. This series was made possible by generous donations from the Westridge Foundation, Art Bridges Foundation, MOAD members, and viewers like you. Welcome. While MOAD's physical building may be closed due to the mandatory shelter in place, you can still get your fill of art and artists of the African diaspora. Each Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific time, join MOAD staff members as we visit some of our favorite artists in their studios for a rare opportunity to hear from the artists themselves and learn how their work is changing as a result of the quarantine. Please visit our archive of past talks on MOAD's YouTube channel. On behalf of the MOAD board and staff, I'd like to now take a moment to hold space for those whose lives have been lost at the hands of police brutality and systemic racism here and throughout the world. I'd like to say their names. Tamara Rice, Brianna Taylor, Tony McDade, Walter Wallace Jr. On behalf of the MOAD board and staff, I'd also like to acknowledge the indigenous peoples who have stewarded the land we are located. In today's program, Senior Director of Education, Dimitri Broxton, will speak with artist Nugen Smith. Dimitri, an Oakland native, has over 18 years of experience working in the field of education and the arts. At MOAD, he leads the education programs that enhance the visitor experience at the museum. His department's mission is to connect youth, educators, and the public to the historical, cultural, and intellectual contributions of the worldwide African diaspora. Outside of his role at MOAD, Dimitri is an independent curator and practicing artist and has served as a curator for the city of Berkeley. Nugent E. Smith is a first generation Caribbean American interdisciplinary artist based in Jersey City, New Jersey. Through his art practice, Nugent deepens his knowledge of historical and present day conditions of black African descendants in the diaspora. Nugent holds a BA uh, fine art from Seton Hall University and an MFA from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. His work has been presented nationally and internationally, including the Museum of Latin American Art, Perez Art Museum, and the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture. Nugent is the recipient of the Leonore Annenberg Performing and Visual Arts Fund, Franklin Furness Fund, Dr. Doris Derby Award, and Joan Mitchell Foundation Painters and Sculptors Grant. Nugen is a lecturer of interdisciplinary art in the Meadows School of the Arts at Southern Methodist University. Let's meet Dimitri and Nugen in the artist studio. <laughs> what is happening? Welcome, 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 everyone. Uh, it's so great to see, I know, technical difficulties, right? <laughs> Nugen, how are you doing? Excellent, excellent. How are you doing, man? Great, great. It's so great to finally be in conversation with you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I just have to say that you are an artist that I discovered through the wonderful platform of Instagram. Um, and, you know, I just instantly fell in love with your work. And the more that I got to know you, the more excited I've become um, about you and your work, oh, and, you know, which I think is a, is a package deal for sure. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Man. And actually, uh, last week, I took some time and went and checked out some of your work, too. And uh, your, your, the boxing gloves and things you're doing with the shells and all that, too, is, is very is very powerful. So, yeah, so it's mutual. All right. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I think I think kind of the, the nice thing is, um, you know, when, when I do this series, I want to talk to you as artist to artist instead of art historian or curator <laughs> um, to artist. So yeah, how how have you been lately? Um, how how has your how's your work um, and life been impacted mm. by what's going on in our world today? Mm. Um, <clears throat> so it's been a roller coaster. Uh, uh, just it has been um, you know a, a time when it I felt like I've never felt before. It, this kind of uh, a certain level of of instability all around. Um, whether it was like not knowing what's going to happen um, with uh, this this pandemic sweeping through, um, in terms of my my loved ones, my immediate friends and family, um, hoping and praying that they all were going to be safe during this time and protected during this time, um, and then just being you know 
within a quarantine, um, it's, it's one thing to be a person who likes to be in your own space all the time, mm -hmm. but then it's another thing to be in your space and you literally can't go anywhere else, you know? Um, so that's, that was, that was a, a huge challenge and um, taught me a lot about myself in the meantime. And, um, and also teaching, once school started back again, teaching has been really helpful for me, um, engaging on a one-to-one -one or as a group, um, that has been really helpful. And, um, you know, sometimes too, the, the effects, the days, you know, it, you feel the effects in different ways on different days. And some days, literally, it was really difficult for me to even articulate the simplest of ideas, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah, I learned a lot about myself during the time, yeah. Uh, I, you know, be, before we went live with everyone, I was really excited to hear how you've been taking advantage of, of, of this time to be in your studio. Um, and, and can, can you tell other folks what, you know, what you've been up to? And we, we see the work behind you. So, so yeah. obviously you're working, you're, you're making new work. Yeah. And that, that took a while even before I even got, got working. Um, I really, um, for, I came, I was, I teach at Southern Methodist University, um, as mm -hmm. they stated in, in the beginning, in Dallas. And so I came home, um, you know, March, March 13th is when we had our spring break, we left for spring break and never went back to campus since then. So um, from literally from the time from, let's just say mid March, up until maybe about, I don't know, beginning of August, it was difficult for me to get in here and make anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, once once it got rolling, then that was that was helpful, and then it, it was also helpful that I had a, an upcoming project. Um, so I had a, a, a campus wide exhibition um, project at Emerson College in Boston, Massachusetts, and that was really helpful to get me get me moving, get me thinking, and also helping me to to rethink the older work um, that I've made. Instead of trying to make new works for mm. you know an exhibition, it's like really had gave me the time to kind of rethink the older work and see how the older work also is in conversation um, with the, the most more recent work. Nice, nice. Um, hmm, yes, I think you can. Um, sorry, there was, a, there was a question coming. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, I, I, I just before we dive into your work, um, you know, and, and the much larger conversation, um, you know, I, I, my, my favorite question to ask every single artist that I speak to is what was, you know, can you tell us about your path to becoming a professional artist? When did it occur? How did you know this is the right path for you? Mm, uh, <clears throat> I grew up around art. So first and foremost, um, I'm half Trinidadian, half Haitian. Um, I spent the early part of my childhood growing up in Trinidad. And there were so many things that around the home that were handmade um, by mm. members of my family. So whether it was the furniture that my grandfather had made, he's a car, he was a, a, a cabinet maker. Um, whether it was the hand wood, the hand carving of wood of little horses and re like low reliefs um, that my uncles and cousins did. Um, I was, I grew up around the handmade object, um, as well as like the chicken coop outside, right? The house nah. where the animals live. That's like built, that's a bundle house. They're building that out of salvage material. So this type of making has been around me, this type of, um, uh, the visual language of using found objects was a part of my growing up. Um, and when I got into university, I actually, um, went in as a political science major because I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. And mm. I took two, uh, two art classes the summer of my sophomore year and that changed the whole directory, like trajectory. Um, I just, I knew at that moment that I wanted to, to make art. And then from there, it was the trying to figure out how that was going to be possible. That's, that's awesome. What, what, what about those classes um, what was it? Was it the particular um, professor? Was it was it the style um, of art, or you know, yeah. did it did it just open up a pathway for you that you didn't know existed? Or yeah, can, opened, can you go more into that? It, it, yeah, it, it opened so many paths, so many pathways. Because the first and foremost, it was um, I was like I was excited to do it because I was already kind of interested in art, you know. So when I got to the class. 
and we began to, to, to paint. The, the first class, it was a painting and sculpture class by the same professor, and they were um, on different days. So on the days that I went, the, the first day I went for a painting class, you know, the class, he, um, the, it wasn't about color theory, it wasn't about all this kind of other kind of history of painting. It wasn't, it was like, we're gonna paint. And, <laughs> you know, we put the, we talked about the colors, we talked about setting up our palette. And it was about each individual, he found the artist, his name was, Anthony Triano and, and rest in peace, he passed away two weeks off after our class was over. And that mm. was also a major um, uh, catalyst for me to continue. Um, but he basically was uh, helped us to, to be connected with the way that we individually um, were, more, were inclined to make marks and to, to, to move and to exchange between the, 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 the medium of paint and the, and the surface that we're painting on and to enjoy that process and to see how all of this is all connected with everything that we live and we experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And he would just talk about things in the class, talk about life, talk about, and it just was like, even if I didn't feel like painting that day, because it was a summer class at that. And imagine college students, summertime, you're hanging out, you know, I, the class was like 8.30 in the morning and oh, man. it didn't matter how late I was up. I was getting up to go to that class, even just to listen to what he had to say. And mm. that was like, that was the, 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 the kind of push, you know, for me coming, coming out of there. Awesome. Awesome. And, and so I would also say that that, you know, or, or I would suppose that that's also um, part, part of why you are also an educator yourself, huh? I think that plays a big part. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. Just I've realized the, the the joy in the exchange that I received from that professor. Um, exactly, exactly. It can change everything. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I, I wanna I wanna actually jump into um, one of our attendees. Kitsan is asking um, asked a question about your name, and you know that's a question I didn't think about. Where where does that where does the name Nugent come from? Yeah, so Nugent um, is my first name is traditionally a Vietnamese last name mm -hmm. and the Y and V e are switched in my name. Um, there's like over the years I've been asking my parents, my other <laughs> family members how this happened and I get a number of stories. So the story that I, that I, that I stick with is um, the fact that um, when my mom was, was pregnant with me, um, my parents had a woman that would come to the house to help out um, during that time and she was Vietnamese. And, um, and then my mom was watching this, um, she was watching this uh, a, a program, a new, uh, a television program she loved to watch. And she was looking at the cast of characters one day and saw that, and then it connected back to the woman that came to help. And then they decided they wanted something different for my name and they gave it to me, but they switched the Y and the G. Okay, okay. So it's not, it's, it's so, so it's based off of when, like the most common Vietnamese, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah. that is awesome. I, I love that story. And as deaf, thank you, Kitsan, because I never would have thought to ask that one. Mm -hmm. And you're so right. Yeah, name stories are always so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna I'm gonna shift over in a second because I want to deep dive into your work because I, I feel like there's there's a lot of con conversation to be had um, mm -hmm. and and analyzing and thinking about your work. So just give me a second here. Um, here it's not here hold on a second <laughs> we just keep on we just keep on on chatting in a, in a second while i set this up um but yeah can you um you work in so many different styles and we're not going to definitely we're, we're not going to take a time right here to look at all of your styles you know i immediately was drawn to your performance work and that's that's one of the things that we're not really going to talk about um, during this conversation right now, or we're not going to analyze, I'm not going to show any of the videos of it. Um, but I was really moved by some of them. <laughs> and I guess, I guess for you, some of them were, were, were further back in, in your mm -hmm. repertoire, um, particularly the spoken word pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I, and I'll let viewers go, go look at them. They're on Vimeo, they're on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, and those, those blew me away, but you work in so many styles. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you excel at all of them. Um, 
I just want to tell people like look at <laughs> look at Eugen's uh, spoken word pieces because man, you are a force with those. But but can you talk about how you work between all of these different media and 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 how do they all relate to each other mm. for you? Yeah. Um, so I consider myself uh, an interdisciplinary artist, and even before I understood what that term meant for me or in terms of the the the, the how, what that term means within the context of of art um and in in contemporary conversation about art um i knew that i was interested i've always been interested in expression in many different ways self-expression in many different ways so <clears throat> from being young and my brother and i like putting on our favorite record and grabbing the vac the, the stand-up vacuum cleaner and <laughs> you know, performing <laughs> for ourselves. <laughs> like that was, that's what I did. You know, um, when we were younger and we, we were playing wrestling, playing WWF, like I made the belt. I made the championship belt out of cardboard and black duct tape, you know? Um, so it was always these ways of, of, of kind of like cross pollinating in order to just express myself. And then um, as I started to get it more involved in, in actually thinking about art as a career, then it was about um, what am I interested in, um, in exploring material wise? And um, in the beginning, it was more about the aesthetics. What does this look and feel like, right? Getting mm -hmm. a certain mm -hmm. kind of energy from that work and just working from aesthetics. And then once I began, the, when I began the Bundle House series, I began the Bundle House series because I realized that that was a way for me to address contemporary issues of lived lives of people that look like me mm -hmm. um, it, through my work. And I, I don't have to stray from the way that I had already been working, but now it became a different concept and I can kind of dive deeper into that concept. Um, and then realizing that, okay, this is, this is one way I can express myself. However, these ideas that I have, these other ideas that I have, perhaps I need some way some way else to kind of really get closer to what I'm trying to say with that. And that's how I started to explore other things like performance and video and photo and, and, and spoken word has always been in my, in my repertoire. Um, I've been, you know, uh, that's how I pretty much made a name for myself in my name, my city, Jersey city, um, as an artist, it started with the spoken word. People knew me as a spoken word, as a poet before knowing me as a visual artist. Mm, mm. You know, I, I would just say that you are truly touched because, um, you know, th th there's there's some spirits that are, that are that are coming to you, mm. if if I'm allowed to say that, because you literally um, just excel at all of them, and I'm just like, there, there's not a lot of artists that can switch between so many different modes mm. of, of expression um, and have them all. I think interlink with each other and 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 make sense, um, but also be of the same quality. And so, yeah, I just I just want to point that out. Um, if anybody doesn't believe me, go go check it out. I've also seen that that you recently were um, in a residency. It was with the Perez Art Museum, right? Um, and you've been doing some programs. The residency was actually um, with Indigo Arts Alliance. Indigo, okay. Yeah, which is um, they're in in um, in Portland, Maine. And they focus on artists, um, artists of color, artists from the, the African diaspora, and um, and the because it became a virtual residency because of COVID, um, we then partnered with um, the Perez Museum to present the um, the residency through like uh, a series of, of online conversations. So it was a it was a partnership with the Perez that came through um, as a result of my residency with Indigo. Nice, nice. And, and, and again, I just want to say as an interviewer and as a facilitator of conversations, masterful. So <laughs> that, 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 that's, all, that's all my bundles of roses for you right now. And I want to... <laughs> It comes, comes with too much, too much talk TV. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm just like, oh, this, this, this med is just incredible. Um, let's let's jump into some of your work, and it's just going to take me a couple seconds to get this to set up correctly. Um, let's see. Uh, there we go. Mm -hmm. All right, and th this this was at your request to start off with this image. Yes. 
Yeah, so this is uh this is Mar Marvin Fabian. Uh oh shoot, I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe it's good that you did that. <laughs> no, um, no, 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 no. Marvin, so, um, sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. Marvin uh is uh my friend, uh my collaborator, and um we had uh three years of of making some really exciting and beautiful magical work together. And um, Marvin from Dominica uh, most recently was living in Martinique where we met in 2017 and began to um, make our performances, our collaborative performances called Lest We Forget. And the most recent one after the fracture, um, which took place at the Perez Museum last year at this time. Um, so he passed away last week and I uh, just want to pour a blessing on his spirit and um, ask him to continue to be with us in this day. Ashe. Ashe, Ashe. Thank you so much for, for sharing that, that with all of us. And, you know, the, the words don't, don't really summarize it. Sorry for that loss. Um, everyone's loss, um, you know, of this beautiful spirit. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, I'm I, I'm sure he's smiling down and and just very thankful for you for for acknowledging you know him and his life and his work in in, in this way. So you know, again, thank you for sharing that out with us as well. Absolutely. Um, to switch, <laughs> sorry to, to 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 switch the 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 moment. And you know what I think I I think I want to go into the idea of bundle houses and. Um, you know, just how bundle houses, is. <laughs> it, it's a beautiful way for me to also think about you and all of these different aspects of yourself, your lived experience, um, your culture, your heritage, stories, um, you know, sh sh the, the amount of sharing that, that you clearly do with all of your work and, and um, taking it personal and how the bundle house um, became that symbol for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Bundle House, um, when I, uh, it was in 2005, I was visiting uh, my then girlfriend, who is now my wife, <laughs> um, life partner, Shireen the Queen. Um, I was visiting her, she was living in London, and I went there, and at that time is when I was really just working through uh, from the aesthetics. And I met um, one of her friends at that time, Shanoa Maxwell, who's a, a photographer. She's also an actress. Um, and she was sharing with us a series of these photographs that she had taken in Uganda, um, in refugee camps and outside in, in surrounding areas close to the refugee camps of people who had survived the genocide um, at that moment in time. And so when I saw some of these images, uh, many of the images of of some forms of shelter that the people had created resonated to me as sculpture. And excuse me, I kept thinking about all of the, these like really, really deep subject matters and painful stories and things that she was sharing with us um, in relation to uh, the, the lived life there. And <clears throat> what it helped me to do was to, to, to start thinking like, hey, these look like sculpture. They're made out of they're, 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 these structures and shelters are created from found materials. Um, here's an opportunity for me to continue to work with found materials, but also to bring um, the awareness to what's going on in this region at that time. And so I, I began immediately um, just thinking about them as these you know, houses and then thinking about the fact that they're literally bundling materials together to make a home. And I, so I came, I just said, okay, bundle house. That's, that says it all um, in, a, in a very practical and literal sense. And then as the years went on, I started to think about, okay, well, bundle house essentially is, um, has a large, a much larger definition, a large, large, much larger connotations and meaning and associations. And that's where I started to kind of be able to pull this idea of bundle house with other, with other works that don't necessarily look like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and we are definitely going to go through some of those works that I'm really excited to be able to go through them. Um, and, and, you know, again, thank you for sharing all these images with, with, uh, with me um, to go through. But 
yeah, can, can you talk about this work? Um, and, and, you know, I think it's really nice to see the transition from that piece. And, and like you said, they don't all necessarily look the same, mm -hmm. um, but, but you can see the, the connection between all of them. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's in part of my, my practice and my exploration um, and my study within Bundle House is thinking about these, each one of these individual structures as their own, having their own unique identity as though created by um, individuals in, for each, in each case. So they would look very different from each other. At the same time, thinking about resources and community and sharing resources. So if one person has, you know, a large piece of tarp, um, a large sheet of tarp, they could possibly share that tarp with someone else. So when I'm creating a, a, an instance where there are multiple bundle houses is thinking about, okay, this material can appear in this one, this one, this one, because they probably shared that material amongst themselves. Mm. How I look at it. Um, and that gives me the opportunity to think about, um, think about the composition in a formal sense too. Um, the way that we use color to move the eye through a composition, right? So using it in this very literal and, and, and formal practical sense, moving the eye through the composition, as well as thinking about community sharing resources. Mm. Um, and so um, imagining what such a landscape would look like where everything is brought together and everything is salvaged, um, nothing goes to waste. And so this um, is one of many landscapes that I create. Um, this I would say is, is one of the most recent ones where it's as intricate. So it's, it all begins with a drawing and then mm -hmm. adding the, 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 the watercolor or the gouache and, acry and, um, and acrylic and then going in and collaging other materials on top of these. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I, I think living here in the Bay Area, I don't know if it's the same in Jersey, um, but, but there's, you know, especially since we've had the, the financial crisis of 2008, um, we, we, we have these homeless encampments. Um, and when I see this, you know, there, there, there's this, this uh, uh, I don't know what it is, a form in the foreground and, and re re replicated that looks like a mattress to me or some kind of a platform. And at least here in Oakland, anywhere I drive around, there, there, there's encampments that feel very much like this. Um, you know, has, do, do, do you have that in Jersey? I'd imagine probably so. Yeah. Um, we, we do, we do. And, and um, at this moment in time, I'm not sure if they exist in the same spaces that I um, remember them being. Um, but yeah, we've, we've had a significant uh, number of these kinds of encampments around our city and as well as um, bordering cities. So if you're driving from like Jersey City going into Weehawken or Union City, there are some areas, um, even Hoboken, like there are some areas where you see like down the mm -hmm. hill, with, you know, tents, people have their tents and things. So yeah, it's all over the world. And this is one of the reasons sometimes you'll see, um, you'll see me write like Bundle House Worldwide and soon come. And really just thinking that the fact that this is not, this is not a problem that's unique to anyone mm -hmm. mm -hmm. on the houses worldwide period yeah beautiful i mean beautifully stated and yeah i, I mean you know i think i think it's also important um you know when, when, when folks see the work and you know they think about your heritage it's easy for someone to be like that's over there but that's also right here as well yeah yep. people are on food lines right now yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's Bundle House. People are on food lines for miles. They're parked for miles. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. Bundle House. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping up into 2019 into the, the literal Bundle House, um, the creation of them, um, which I absolutely love. <laughs> and the, these, these, are, these are the pieces that I saw um, first on Instagram that I instantly fell in love with. Um, and yeah, and, and then, you know, there, there, we can see, in, in, <clears throat> excuse me, that it's mixed media and found object sculptures. Um, can you talk more about the inspiration and, and where pieces came from? Yeah, so <laughs> this was the first piece um, that I made when I went to, uh, when I started teaching in Dallas. So, <clears throat> um, it, you know, I got there, I'm setting up my studio and um, I'm like, really, you know, when you have the, as an artist, you have 
is just something that's on you. And he's like, you have to start making this now. And that for me was many, what I call mini bundle houses. So I knew that I wanted to make sculpture, the bundle house sculptures, but smaller because I had made them in the past, but there were these large installations mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and they would come down and they never would exist anymore. So I knew that I wanted to make smaller sculptures. And so that was the first thing. And I, I you know, I had very, I had my tools, but I didn't really have many materials at all. But in true bundle house fashion, it was like, okay, started like, I went down to the wood shop <laughs> and there was the dumpster. So I'm pulling out all these interesting cutouts and shapes and stuff and loading those into the studio. And then there was a, a dumpster outside of the theater um, because they broke down the set, they were throwing stuff in there. And some sorority, um, campus sorority, threw away all like this big bag of all of this like, like paraphernalia from the sorority. And I was like, Hello! <laughs> like oh, score fabrics with patterns <laughs> and all kinds of colors and stuff. And so literally that was it. And it was like, just like how it always happens with Bunda House. It's like, I, I usually, when I go to make an installation, I go with some materials and I scour the area for other materials to make them very specific about that location where the bundle houses are made. Um, and it's the way the spirit has always been providing for bundle house. And mm -hmm. so went out there and found this bag of fabric and went upstairs to the studio and it was like go time. Um, and this was the first one that I made. Um, and because of, um, I didn't have access to like many of my other more sophisticated tools and stuff, this one holds a, a, a kind of crude energy um, because it was like, ah, I gotta get, I gotta make this part right now and I don't have that thing. So how is it gonna happen? And it's gonna mm -hmm, happen mm -hmm. right now. And this was so, and then with that too, there's a care and a sensibility and a sensitivity and a, and a, and a sense of love um, going into this very first mini. Um, and so bringing in that aspect of the crude the, as the aspect of the immediate, bringing in these formal elements too, right? Let's talk about color and balance and structure and all that, but then also to like the sensation, you know, how do I mm. also bring a sense of softness and beauty um, and care to something that represents um, so many things that are, that are not that, you know? Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, the, these, these are so exciting for me, um, just the, uh, the, the quality of them. Um, oh, and I guess I, I forgot that I put a little a little zoom in there so we can get a, a sense of all of the materials um, that are included. Um, you know, kind of looking at this outside of the experience of, of seeing physical bundle houses, what are your other influences on this? Because these, you know, and, and I'll, I'll just I'll just start off with with my question and where I'm thinking of is is these feel like totems to me, um, mm -hmm. and and they they feel very familiar in some way, and I can't quite put um, a pin on why they feel so personally um, familiar to me, like something mm -hmm. something something that 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 I've seen when when you know when they're on this scale as an object, it feels, um, yeah, like like some kind of a sacred object even maybe. Mm -hmm. I think that that possibly um, has to do with um, <clears throat> the, the, the materials used, um, the materials um, that I, I, I'm, I gravitate towards, um, predominantly I should say, have a sense of, um, of uh, like they, they've come from something from nature, something natural. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then even with that, um, that, that other, there's another layer of it where I'm choosing objects and materials that feel like they come from that world, but also feel as though they had a heartbeat perhaps at one, at one sense. And, and when I say heartbeat, not necessarily a heartbeat, but something, mm -hmm. something, something alive, you know, um, and, and that, that moved. And so when I bring the materials together, it is, um, I think that I, I ultimately am, am envisioning them and experiencing them as living objects. Um, and so 
with that in mind and that feeling as I'm, as I'm creating that emotion, as I'm creating, I think that sometimes the, my, the, 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 the choices that I make perhaps lend themselves to it um, ultimately getting closer to feeling as though they're, they're alive and they're, they're, they're breathing. And I believe that that is the, that is the ashe. Um, that is the power that these that these hold, and I, I'm working to get closer to that. Some more successful than others. Well, I'm gonna pop into one that I also think is highly successful, um, and, and 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 maybe just because I'm highly attracted to red. <laughs> and I think the way that that you've got the the red moving around here, um, you know, and then this little window, and I I, I feel like this piece really just taps into my imagination <laughs> like this this I see kind of this this turtle or, or this moving creature of some type that I can clearly see as a house mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. yep and and this um it might have been the way that I um when I was sh shrinking the object for in the document that this is a little bit it's a little bit squished so, oh okay okay yeah okay. so she's actually a, just a little taller um than than she appears here um, but yeah, this is, um, this is number two and I wanted, this is number two. So, uh, I call them FS and FS when you see them in the title means freestanding as opposed to a relief or drawing. So the freestanding bundle house or freestanding mini. So this one was number two and with number two, what I, I wanted a, a little more sense of openness, um, than in number one. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so. Um, you can feel that kind of openness in the, in the center of the space. Um, and uh, yeah, the, this, this one was, and, and also this one is probably almost twice the size as the first one. So there were these other challenges of, um, um, okay, you've done the first one. And you know, sometimes when you create the first thing, it's like this raw energy that goes in it. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time when you move on, you go to the next one, there's almost like this kind of like more carefulness, like, <laughs> 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 you know, so I wanted to, um, I actually, I brought that first one nearby. So the first one can tell me loosen up, mm. you know, and, and I think part of my strategy of loosening up is to kind of leave it a little bit more, more open with this. <laughs> Now, now you said she. Can, can you tell me a little bit more about that? <laughs> yeah, um, I, that just came out today. <laughs> that was today was the first time that I referred to this one as she. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. And, and I don't know why. I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I get that the the energy, may, maybe the openness, the materials mm. that you mm. used, mm -hmm. you know, the the way that you treated the surface. Um, mm -hmm. And the application of each um, different element was very different than the, the previous piece. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I can see that for sure. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing too is like one of the things that I personally enjoy, oh, go, um, to step back one, is I am very much, um, part of my practice is to, after the work is created, um, I, 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 I visit the work I step away from it, leave it alone. I love it when I install a work and I leave the gallery or wherever it's installed. Mm -hmm. I come back a couple of days later. It's like I can, I really feel like I'm experiencing it as an outsider. And um, and and this this particular piece, um, it, it is like that. When I when I came back to this, I felt like I was getting really close to what I'm what I'm trying to get at as the mm -hmm. sculptural pieces. Yeah. I love it. I'm, a, I'm keep, gonna keep. I I I need to turn this program into a two-hour program because <laughs> we could never go. I want to remind our audience members to please. I see someone put your questions into the Q and A. Um, in about five minutes, we will get to the Q and A. I promise you. Um, but you know, I definitely want to go through go through some of these. Um, and so this is closer to what we see behind you right now. We will get to that as well. I mm -hmm. definitely want to walk around the studio. Um, but you, 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 maybe not a shift. You, you, you translated um, into more of a two-dimensional surface. However, this is still not two-dimensional. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And what, what, what prompted that, that shift? And also, you know, this, this is um, a rather large scale, mm -hmm. not, not as large as what we're seeing behind you, but um, 
you know, it's, pre it's pretty large. Yeah, so it's bigger than the houses that were on that landscape in the beginning. Exactly. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> when I started Bundle House, they, they began, there were drawings. So um, the first Bundle House ever imagined was a drawing. And literally, I did it on an airplane, and it was on a barf bag. Hmm. So I kind of... <laughs> <laughs> no, I... It drew a whole list, though. Yeah, a whole row of them. I'll send you a photo of it. <laughs> um, it's like any, like that, any means necessary. Oh, barf bag, grab it, let's go. Um, and, and so with these pieces, um, these, I started this series on this, in this particular scale, um, on paper after I was, after I was making these maps, I was making these conceptual maps, my borderline series. And I realized two things. One is, you know, so many people that really love the borderlines pieces, they either don't have the space for it or they, they, it's too expensive. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. okay, I was like, all right, well, how do I make work that can fit in someone's space, someone's home, and also um, more affordable? And I thought, okay, let's focus in on one as a way to really focus in and, and, and give myself the challenge, one, of composing this, this object within this space. How do I use the materials? How do I use my subtractive addition uh, and additive methods? How do I think about this as sculpture in a, in a 2D space? Um, and so this is how I started these and just really enjoyed the, 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 the play with creating them. And mm -hmm. then started to think about um, this kind of fragmentation of space and, per and, and perspective and disorientation of perspective. Um, and so these were, this is, this is part of that entire series of these of, of these works. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Um, and I'm gonna go in so we can see some of the detail, the, the collage work, um, as as well as some of the finer details, the little lace that you know <laughs> that you've included in there. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think you know. I just think these are so successful. Um, I'm definitely a fan of them. And this piece, I think, is incredible. I think the jerry can <laughs> for me is 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 what is what did it. But then also, um, I think you're starting to translate some of the pieces that we saw earlier. Um, some of the earlier pieces with the map. Um, it's not the bundle house standing by itself. It's the, you can, we can see others behind it, um, and you know, and and then also kind of some of the map making. Exactly. And this piece actually is on, on view at uh, Wasaic Project in, in New York um, as part of their exhibition right now. Um, and that, yeah, this work is on view there. Beautiful, beautiful. So, oh, so folks, can actually, folks can actually see it? Yeah, they, they have limited uh, viewing, um, but they, yeah, people can actually view it. Yep. They can beautiful, actually. Beautiful. Well, well, we'll we'll drop that link into the comments for folks, so you can also go um, check that out as well. Let's see, why is this not proceeding? Um, and then, you know, I, I mentioned the map making. Um, I think it's also important for folks to see scale. Like, your <laughs> these are not little pieces, um, and 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 it, and it looks like you've taken over the space with this one. Um, can, can can you tell me more about these 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 um, th these yeah. banners that feel very uh medieval to me also <laughs> yeah they they have they have all of that um <clears throat> that those kind of historical connotations and i think that um for me it's important to be connected to the root and the reason why i'm doing these and the the spe very specific intents that i have with these and to also allow for paths for multiple entry points into the work um so people can come from all different kind of cultural backgrounds, like life, like lived experience, but there are certain things about it that mm -hmm. relate to the human condition. And so that brings them closer and then we can engage in the conversation about the other, the other things. Um, this was at um, Art on the Vine Art Fair, I believe in 2007, 18, 2017, I believe, I think it was. And, um, and so these two pieces here, um, are the two most recent maps, um, border, maps from the Borderline series. The one over to the left um, with the black 
top yeah, that we'll one is yeah, Imembe. And that one is actually, um, a lot of these are, the, are fictitious maps. So I'm taking multiple landscapes and um, combining them to create a new landform. However, this one is the island um, of Haiti, which was the, um, the indigenous name for Hispaniola, that, um, where um, Haiti and the Dominican Republic, um, they share that, that island. Um, but it's turned 90 degrees counterclockwise. Mm. And when I came, I, I printed out the map. This was for an exhibition that I was in at uh, Brick Arts in Brooklyn. And um, I printed out the map and I dropped in my studio, I left. And when I came back, it was facing me in this direction. And, um, and I was like, wow, it looks like a figure, um, almost like running, you know, in, oh, in yeah. motion. And I was like, uh-huh. And then I thought, well, who is this figure? What is this figure? And the first thing that came to mind is a deity, the Loa, the spirit and the Loa. And then started thinking, well, okay, well, perhaps this work is kind of leading me into this, this thinking about what would a, a Loa for reparative justice and reconciliation in this space, um, what would they look like? And what would that be like? What would their energy mm. be like? And so this started to, to speak about that, going in that direction of being the loa for this space. Um, and and then, with, 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 with that loa happen to be Dambala or? <laughs> no, so the, the loa is it's, it's a new one. This, it's, an, it's a totally mm. new loa, the, you know? Ah. Um, it was the imagining, because when I saw that as a figure, it was like, uh-huh, figure, um, okay, then deity, because it, it seemed like it was totally covered. It seemed like it had some sort of fabric on the head. So the first thing I thought was like Igungun, and then that kind of masquerade and then the ancestor reverence and all of that came to mind. And, and then I went back specifically to this space and thought Aloha. Wow, wow. You know, I, I think there's just a lot of power and, and shifting the map because, um, you know, I, just the perspective on these land masses, you know, also the, the way that maps are presented is from a certain viewpoint mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that we've all come to accept. And uh, <laughs> the world is not necessarily uh, shaped in, in, in this direction with, you know, um, London as the center of the world, <laughs> I'll, I'll say. So I, I just think there's a lot of power to, um, to, to shifting that, you know, and I don't know, if that was also part of your thinking on just like let's let's have a different perspective mm -hmm. on on this place and and then um, yeah I, I also also I think the the connection with with Haiti you said your your um, that's connects directly to your ancestry yes. um, do do you think about that a lot <laughs> in in your work and and you know I, I know there, there's lots of artists that we've shown at the museum that. Um, are constantly just like analyzing how um, the island of Hispaniola or uh, Santo Domingo was, you know, is it, seen as these two different places, but really they're one. Um, mm -hmm. Does that does that play into your work? Uh, yeah, it, it plays into my work in the sense of of thinking about this um, this this root of colonization, um, where spaces existed and they had a certain kind of ebb and flow. Um, and then here comes this hand of this, uh, this, this very particular hand of oppression and, um, and, and destruction coming in and just wreaking havoc in the space where spaces come to become divided. People become grouped together in a way that they weren't grouped together before. So people that perhaps were, had a tension between each other previously, now they're considered one mm -hmm. people. And, and so I'm constantly thinking about that, um, the impacts of colonialism within the Black diaspora. And that is an incredibly broad, um, broad umbrella. Um, mm -hmm. And I recognize that. However, that gives me the opportunity to be able to have multiple spaces and rooms to visit for ideas and to visit to address things and question, find answers and play. Mm. Yeah, and you know, and 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 I love I, this is this is a detail in case folks didn't quite put that together. Um, but uh, 
you know, th there's there's the stitching on the map, and and I also noticed the stitching together of of different things, and the, um, you, you know, the choice could have been you could have just glued those together or hidden the seam from us, but you you you're intentionally showing um, the the stitch work um, yes. is 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 it you know can can I read into all that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, the stitching is is directly related to borders, the ideas of borders. And this is why these um these works, anytime you see the stitching on these map-like mm. works, um, it's in the borderline series. And thinking about this idea of how spaces were arbitrarily carved up according to the interests of the colonizer, mm. um, but not necessarily in the interests and never in the interests of the people um who are indigenous to the space. Um it also talks about borders as like the, the futility of borders, how no matter how difficult, you, how tough and, 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 and opaque you try to make the border, there is way, there are ways people are going to find ways to penetrate it. Um, and the fragility of borders as it relates to that, as well as in many other ways that we could talk about it. So using thread, right? So I'm using mm -hmm. thread to sew these. Um, and they're sewing, they're literally sewing sections of paper together. So these aren't like, just made out of one shape of mm -hmm. this island. It's like multiple pieces of paper that I have ripped and then brought back together and hand stitched to form this island. Wow, that's awesome. And you know we're 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 getting closer to um, the current work, and and I'm gonna shift after this one to go to, so so we can actually look around. Yeah. And, and and see what you're currently working on. Um, but but again, I think um, I, what really attracted me to this piece is that now you're also coming further and further away from the wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was um, for the exhibition titled The Other Side of Now, Foresight in Contemporary Caribbean Art. And um, that was at the Perez Museum curated by Maria Elena Ortiz and Dr. Marsha Pierce, um, who's in Trinidad, from Trinidad. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago. And we were um, invited artists were asked to think about a future of the Caribbean. And, 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 and one of the caveats, is a future of the Caribbean outside of doom and gloom, right? We think mm. about the Caribbean as like, as ground zero for climate change. We experienced that, we've been seeing that more readily. And so because Bundle House is essentially about doom and gloom, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was like, oh man, okay, how am I going to think about this? So I started thinking about the ways that um, I have been interested in collaboration and have been um, forging um, collaborations and different types of, of networking within the Caribbean with other artists and creatives and thinkers. And so I thought to myself, well, you know, this fact that we're also, to travel from one Caribbean island to the other, it's so difficult to, through all the bureaucracy and all this. You have to fly outside of the Caribbean to come to the United States in order to go back to the Caribbean to another country. So I thought about, okay, I started looking at researching um, volcanoes and tectonic mm -hmm. tectonics and realize um, looking at the Caribbean plate, which is one the tectonic plate that a lot of the Caribbean islands sit on. and in my research, I was re finding out that um, continental drift is happening still. And right now the continents are actually coming closer together. Oh, right? wow. We were Pangea before we broke apart and now they're measuring the fact that we're moving back together again. But it, I imagine that this wouldn't be such a clean coming back together as one. Yeah. There might be a break somewhere, right? <laughs> the fracture, right? So the fracture happens and the Caribbean plate moves away from the rest of those, of the, of the plates. And we now mm. exist in our own space in the uni ocean. And we, the, 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 the landscape rises out of the water a little bit. So now all of these countries that were once separated by water and bureaucracy were now only separated by the time it takes to get from one place to the other. Wow. And all of the new languages and customs and traditions, of course, it will still have its problems, but all of this new beautiful that will be possible. And this is the shape of the Caribbean plate here. And this work is, is about that. Wow. Wow. That is incredible. 
And this was the performance that Marvin and I made together, we created mm -hmm. together, was bringing this to life. You know, the space outside of the museum was a top of, it had these beautiful little hills and coconut trees mm -hmm. and stuff. And we built the bundle house there and made the performance there. And that was our little island, you know, where we created, we brought that, this piece here, we brought that to the world and brought that to life. I love it, I love it. Um, and, I, and I definitely, where, where, where can folks see that at? Because I'm going um, mm -hmm. to shift to um, the studio. They can see that on my website, NugentSmith.com, um, uh, performance. You'll be able to see it on there. Awesome. Um, I'm going to stop our share. Ah, OK. Um, and it's, so today, if you would please um, turn on the other camera, uh, we're going to do a little walkthrough and then I'll get to the questions we have in the hopper. Okay, so we got enough time for people's questions? Is we, that right? we do, we do. Show them more work. Um, we can, we, we, I always run over, so <laughs> we'll, we'll run over. <laughs> All right, so I'll share this, I'll start with this. Um, you wanna start with the one behind me or the other one? Uh, let's, let's start with the one behind you. So, so today, if you can pull up the other camera, that would be awesome. Yeah, so this piece that we're looking at right now, um, you're seeing the majority of it. Um, if you could turn on the camera. Oh, it went off. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, oh, actually, I'm I'm still using. Um, I'm I'm showing this one that's behind that was behind me. Now. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, so this one is uh, this is a, a work in progress. Um, I've been thinking about um, one scale. And I actually started this piece um, during quarantine when I was invited to take over the Instagram account of Support Black Art. And, um, and so I kept thinking to myself, well, what am I gonna do? Um, because one of the, the, the requests was that there's one live event, Instagram live event. So I thought to myself that I would, um, that I would actually make something live. <clears throat> I, I used the opportunity to um, just kind of leap take a little leap and be a little vulnerable and exposing and opening and sharing part of the, the the creative process and so this piece this section here was what i made was what i started during that instagram live account um live takeover so i started to make this bundle house inside of this inside of this raft and um and then I realized quickly after the Instagram Live thing was over, like the following week, I was really thinking that I, I needed to expand this piece more. And so I started to add additional sections of paper to make it wider. And, and the reason why it's this scale is because this is the, the, this is the maximum width of the actual wall that it was on that I was working on. So if that wall was bigger, it probably would have been bigger. And um, so I'm thinking about this fact that bundle house as it is all about these themes that I discussed um, you know survival ingenuity community um, thinking about climate change and the effects of climate change but also like now even the bundle house needs some sort of raft or something mm. to, to help it out like it's it's that bad for <laughs> bundle house itself so um, that was the impetus for this. And then it began to, to, to expand outside of there. So bringing in so many other ideas, these ideas um, that I was really thinking about during quarantine about death and the death literally being around us constantly. And these bones are in thinking mm -hmm. about that. The bones are also in thinking about a lot of the, the, the research that I've been doing during quarantine and thinking about um, and the work I've been doing prior to that too, but specifically during quarantine conversations having about the sea and the sea being this place of memory, the sea holding our ancestors and the bones there are, are these are the bones from, from our ancestors that are in these waters, but not only that, but other stuff are in, inside the waters too. And so navigating through all of this, um, I wanted to, to bring in this ideas and, and, and a closer and more direct um direct uh um uh, association to death um is something mm. that i have kind of strayed away from um but i think during quarantine i started to embrace that and 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 move forward to, um with that a bit so this is still in progress um still has quite a way to go 
and um, yeah, taking my time with it. That's that that's amazing. Uh, uh, thank you so much for sharing that. I know I know a lot of folks are like, I don't want anyone to see it <laughs> when I'm still working on it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you know, it's it's um, I I'm at this point right now where yes, there's some things that I keep to myself um, while I work on them until they're finished, and then there's another thing too. At, at this moment, like, you know, as 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 I know at this moment, like life is can be over like that. You know, mm -hmm. and, um, and at this day in the game, I, I think people hold things privately because they don't want feedback. They want people to kind of think about the work or judge the work based on, you know, where it is in that stage. And some people, frankly, are like thinking about, you know, they're selling the work and stuff so they don't want to show it till true. At this point, I'm like, look, <laughs> nothing's promised. So I go for it. What's up? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Can, can, can you give us a real quick whirl around? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'll launch you on this right here. Um, and so this is another um, uh, part of my studio. This is another uh, sculpture that's in, in, in progress at the moment. I'm doing a series of these busts um, that are made from found materials. Um, I work in multiple mediums, as I've stated before. So the mouth on this is actually ceramic um, and it's attached to this wooden structure. That's the face, um, the nose here, kind of uh, covered up here with, with rubber, um, the eyes and thinking about this, this figure here, I'm, I'm still developing what this figure is, but this figure is definitely um, the Uncle Tom, the overseer, the one that uh, looks like us, but benefits from the luxuries and the, 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 the benefits of being on the colonizer side. <laughs> um, and at the same time, holding some of the, 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 the magic um, of us. Um, and this is actually a collaboration between my wife, Shireen and I, where she's a hairstylist. And um, so she created the basket out of- Oh, that's uh, incredible. Hair. Yeah. Um, she also styled the wig here. I've kind of destroyed the style a little bit. We're going to revisit that. But inside of the head is the snake um, that's all sequenced, um, going back to the tradition of sequencing um, in relation to Haitian, Haitian art, the, 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 um, uh, the voodoo flags. Mm -hmm. uh, that are predominantly made out of sequins. So the snake is coming out of the basket here. There's a plant that goes into this this as well. So that's one thing. Um, this other one I would like to just share with you guys. Um, this one I am actually- wow, that is gorgeous. Yeah, thank you. This one is on view um, as part of Prism Art Fair um, right now. And um, so people can see that along with two other um, works of this, uh, of this size as well as content. Um, and this piece here is called Bundle House Table Talk. Um, and Table Talk and thinking about this idea of, you know, what kind of conversations do we have around our tables? Um, mm -hmm. Talk about these very difficult issues and, you know, what do we, and, and coming up to, with plans together to be able to affect change. Um, so this, as you can see some of the details in here, um, being the, it's not just adding the materials on, but it's also the subtractive method. So it's cutting away, cutting into, gluing from behind, um, and, and as, as well as coming back and really thinking about this, this kind of um, creating depth and space, but also this kind of surreal, um, what kind of space are we really truly looking at and, and what perspective are we seeing this from? Um, the, the disorientation, I, I work to kind of destabilize, destabilize the viewer in the way that um, uh, um, living or surviving or, or navigating through an environment where bundle house truly exists um, can be very um, destabilizing as well. So that's mm -hmm. um, a little bit, and these, it's just resting on top of some, some works in progress uh, back here. Yeah, that's it. Beautiful. All right. Um, let me see. Now I'm gonna jump into the Q and A. Um, I also just gonna say that I think everyone is loving the collaboration with you and your wife. I agree. I'm I'm right there with them on that one. 
that's that's pretty incredible. Um, and I don't know if you speak Brazilian Portuguese, but uh, mm -hmm. we, we we have a we have a viewer um, from Brazil mm -hmm. on Facebook Live that is giving you lots and lots of props. So <laughs> I want to point that out. Um, obrigado, obrigado. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. That was that was for you, Dan. <laughs> um, and someone also loves the champagne cork metal for the eyes. I noticed that after I read that, that, that is an awesome use of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I collect them. I've been collecting them over the years. I'm, I mean, I've got like lots of cork and lots of the, the, those cages and stuff. I'm going to start off actually with a question from Facebook that we have from Nikki. Um, how, how do you think of the space for your sculptures um, as objects in museum spaces, outdoors, um, or otherwise? And she also says, thank you. Yeah, all of the above. I, I think about them existing in, um, in many different spaces, in museums, you know, talking about traditional white cube, as well as non-traditional spaces. So outdoors in the landscape, um, uh, yeah, all, all of the above. It, it's important to me, like I'm, I am engaging in this conversation about art and presenting art within institutions, as well as thinking about how art lives um, it, within a community and, and people um, having access to the work itself, as well as the work being a, um, a reflection of the, the community. So specifically about Bundle House, all, all of the above. Awesome. Um, our next question is from Jessica. Um, Eugene, can you speak about the use of soil? Oh yeah, that was that's a wonderful question. Thank you so much. Yeah, it did say diaspora soil. Um, yeah. And if you think about the representation of landscape as depicting a certain space, place, or as an imagined community. Thank you, Jessica. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so the soil um, that I've been using, you see that in the work, you might see Zambian soil. Um, uh, diaspora soil. Um, I've been collecting soil um, throughout my travels uh, and um, been aided. Some people have sent me soil. Um, wow. Smuggled, smuggled soil. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, make sure that, make sure I step in that mud before I get on the plane, put those boots away in a bag. It'll turn to, it'll turn to soil, <laughs> you know, mm. um, and, and therefore using it in the work. Um, as a pigment and using it as, as a way to directly imbue it with the land and, and all that's contained within that soil. So the work now automatically contains that. So I use it um, in that way. And I think of, um, in terms of thinking of space, like place and location, um, I, I'm, in, I'm reading um, Poetics of Relation right now um, by Glissant. Um, for this uh, round round take this this discussion um, with yard yard concept and um, it's uh, and and in connection to that I'm um, thinking about like Stuart Hall and many other writers and thinkers mm. in the Caribbean thinking about this idea of you know the the place is where we are um, so the Caribbean is here in Jersey City as well um, I'm here I'm bringing that here I'm, I'm mm -hmm. Caribbean is no longer just a fixed location. Um, and, and as we think about that word diaspora, um, the way that we spread out um, through um, our, the different roots that we take, R-O-U-T-E-S, um, helps us to be able to claim space and still relate back to the things that have formed us and informed us, those, those past identities, and claim that space rightfully in wherever we are. I, I love that. So, you know, I mean, I think I, I, I do want to I do want to go a little bit further with, with that because I mean the when we read the when we read um, the materials list then then we start to find out where the soil originates from um, and that that's that's a really specific choice that you're making and so I also want to go to like I've spoken to artists that consider themselves shamans you know I'm thinking like Leonardo Benzat who considers himself an urban shaman. Or I recently spoke to uh, Basil Kincaid, who also um, uses very similar uh, language in that way. Mm -hmm. Is is 
do you see, you know, and <laughs> if you don't want to go into that at all, you know, that that's okay. But, you know, using that specific soil um, as, as adding another life um, force maybe to, to the work. Yeah, definitely. I, I don't, um, because I recognize that the soil itself contains DNA, <laughs> um, no matter how we, we, we look at it. Um, I think that it is it is bringing that energy of life to the work, um, mm. not necessarily um, not necessarily alive life, you know. I can put put that in quotes, but life to mm -hmm. the work because it contains the traces of of that and history, you know, uh, for for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I, yeah, and um, again, Jessica, thank you for that question because it was one of those things that I, I kind of thought of and, and then I lost it. So um, yeah, the next question um, is from another user here, um, Sasesk. I, I, I think that's a um, just, I think that's just their, their Zoom name. <laughs> but can mm -hmm. you walk us through the process of creating a work um, like this? Um, and I'm assuming the most recent one that you showed us um, and when do you know when you're done? Ooh, um, that, that last, the, the last uh, question, when do I know that I'm done? Um, yeah, the work, the work, the work tells me. Um, you know, it's one of the things that I've, I heard, I remember in the beginning when I was in, in college, uh, undergrad and painting, specifically painting, you know, one of the things I commonly heard from my professors was, um, you, you can work, you can make a work and continue to work it until you ruin it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, it doesn't mean that it's over. You can then also bring it back. You can revive it. Right. But then there's work that involves as part of that. So, um, whatever you add to the work, I think about it is whatever I add to the work, it should help the work and not take away from the work. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it gets to a point where anything that I then add, you know, it's like, okay, nah, no more, no more, no more. Because the more that I add, then it would start to take away from the work. And I think at that, at those moments is when I start to back out and consider stopping. Um, and process-wise, Bundle House, um, the, the, the works that are um, not sculptural, like 3D in its true sense, um, always start with a drawing. So, mm -hmm. and it's a pencil. It's normally a pencil unless you're, I'm talking about those maps where I it's all pen and drawings so starting with the pencil to it is usually a one line drawing never lifting up the pencil to create the foundation of this bundle house and then going in and adding color with watercolor a wa watered down acrylics more opaque acrylics and adding oil pastels to give a foundation of some sort of base of color and then going in with cutting in and adding other materials and fabrics and such. Um, and the other, the materials that I choose to use as well as the other imagery that I source from magazines to, to use them in the collage, they also help to inform and, and shape the work. Beautiful. Um, uh, oh, and so we have a question from Sierra. Um, do you go through the process of activating the paintings and the FS sculptures like you do in your performance pieces? Mm. Um, that's a great question. The, because of the nature of performance, I believe that the performances, um, they have a particular charge that can only come from the, the act of the live act itself. So that charge, the energy that's, mm. that's generated in that comes from the live actions within that time and, and space. The, sculpt, the sculptures um, themselves, specifically talking about the sculptures, um, they're, they're done over periods of time. So days, weeks, months. And so the energy level of my le energy level is, is totally different. It fluctuates as I, every time I encounter it. But I think that it's like, you know, it takes on, it charge, gets charged from the music I'm listening to during that time, the talk radio I'm listening to, the audio books I'm listening to, the dances, the, the moments of frustrations, the phone calls, all those types of things are, are, I think, is what also charges the sculpture themselves. So it's a different kind of charge. Mm -hmm. 
I love that. I have two more questions for you. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I'm, who, who are your, uh, which artists are your greatest influences? I don't have a greatest influence, to be honest. Um, I'm, I'm inspired constantly, constantly, constantly. I'm, um, and, and you know, I don't want to use that word inspired so, so loosely. I want to make a, a more um, direct um, uh, statement about that. It is, there are artists who, who motivate me, mm. artists whose works that I admire um, that don't necessarily motivate me, <laughs> you know? Okay. <laughs> um, they come across that work and I'm enjoying seeing that work, but the work doesn't motivate me. However, there are artists who, when I see their work, I am motivated. Um, and uh, so some of those artists, one of those artists were um, was on uh, featured here, uh, Yeshua Klaus. Oh, wonderful, um, wonderful. Yeshua, um, at first I I love his work. We've exhibited together. Really cool brother. Um, and during the um, our quarantine here in in the Northeast, he was one of those artists. He and Basil, as a matter of fact. So Yeshua, Basil, Ayana Evans, um, uh, Sede Mokanen. Um, Dominique DeRusso, um, they were some of the artists that, that, that kept me um, inspired, motivated, interested um, mm. because of the way that they, they moved through that time. Um, kind of prioritizing self-care, talking about that openly, as well as continuing to collaborate with others and lift up others during that, that time and make work. Mm. Um, and knowing what the, the, the place that I was in, I knew that it, that wasn't possible for me. So that was encouraging, you know, and that, and I, I needed that, you know, I, I and that, you know, give thanks for, for that. So that's how I, I think about not necessarily, you know, the artists that I admire most or anything like that. Okay. Okay. I, I, <laughs> I, lo I love that. I love that answer. And especially some of the, um, some of the artists I'm going to have to circle around with some of those, <laughs> those other artists that you named. Um, and then finally, um, you know, what's next for you? Where, where, where can we see your work? You mentioned a couple of them, but what do you have coming up? Um, you know, art fairs, shows, residencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right now um, I'm showing three new works, um, including one that I just showed the smaller piece um, table talk on the house table talk I'm showing on prism um, prism art fair P R I D M. And they are remote this year. Um, and they focus on artists from the African diaspora. Um, and it's a wonderful platform. Um, it, it helps to launch, um, you know, make it helps to launch the, the, the careers of, of many um, emerging artists of color, black artists, um, a wonderful platform. Um, and I'm also showing, uh, I'll be showing at the um, Nasher Sculpture Center um, in Dallas, Texas. I have an installation of my spirit carriers, which are created um, for victims, um, unarmed black victims of police violence. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there are these vessels that hang suspended from, from the ceiling and they, they float and they're, they're imagined to be um, vessels to hold and care for the spirits of those who were, who were murdered in that, in that way by police until the spirits can go where they need to go. Um, so that's going to be taking place from, that opens uh, December 10th. Um, and that goes until the beginning of January, January 8th, I believe it is. And I'll also have an installation um, in, in uh, a window installation with Sean Horton Presents, um, uh, a dealer gallerist that I've been working with um, for uh, maybe about half half a year now. We've been in great conversation and, and, and really building a wonderful relationship. And he's been placing a lot of my works in significant collections lately, um, which has been fantastic. Um, and uh, Wasaic Project, I'm in an exhibition there. And um, I'll have a, a video collaborative work um, also that's projected on the outside of um, the Wasaic Project um, Millhouse um, in collaboration with another wonderful um, sister named Amanda 
Edwards, Amanda Lee Edwards, who's a choreographer, poet, dancer, really brilliant. She's uh, in the MFA program at Duke University at the moment. Um, yeah, so those are the, 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 the things that I have going right now. Um, oh, you're a busy man. <laughs> ask about the hoodie <laughs> yes the hoodie yeah, for yeah, sure yeah. for sure yeah. the hoodie is from um this yeah so it's definitely it's all around all over print you know do that um and it, it is from uh the three by martica so it's the um the the large print um the large bundle house borderlines piece called three by martica um so it's it's a detail from that and it's it's all over printed on here these will be available real soon I love it. I love it. And we can find that on your website as well, right? You will. You will real soon. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Well, Nugent, this has been wonderful. I, I love getting to talk to you about your work and, and everything else that you have going on. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's, 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 it's so inspiring. I, I just got to say it's really inspiring. I love your energy. I love your work. I love everything that you do. So um, I can't wait till the quarantine is over. We get to meet in real life. Yo, thank you so much to the whole team at, at Moad. I really, really um, ap appreciate this uh, this platform. Um, and and first and foremost, like you know, when you the first that you got in, interested in the work, um, and I, I give thanks for that and for you reaching out for this opportunity to share. Um, and then also too, I just want to big you up for um, you know this 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 kind of really um, very um, uh, informed conversation right you obviously have done your homework <laughs> um and, as well as as the the kind of the energy also too right um i've been i've been thinking about these kinds of um uh talks you know and i've been doing a few of them over the the, the since quarantine and stuff and most of them i'm all of them i'm sitting down until today so today i decided i'm gonna stand up and see how all that right. <laughs> <laughs> So I think I like standing up. <laughs> and I, I encourage those who are doing these types of things to experiment with ways that make you feel more comfortable and make you feel um, in a way that you feel more natural. Um, because these things can be kind of stiff and tiring. And, you know, so I appreciate the energy. And this is you're, you're getting what you're also giving back. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, I just want to say for folks, if you joined us late, you can see um, this this uh, talk will be on our Facebook um, page, Museum of the African Diaspora Facebook, and uh, by Friday we'll have it archived on our YouTube channel as well. Um, Nugent, this has been awesome. We'll be here next week again with the uh, Five Fifths Collective. All right, Nugent, have a wonderful one. Thank you. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, whole team at Moa. All right, peace, have a wonderful one. Bye everybody and we'll see you next week.